The riffs are too repetitive, the lyrics make no sense All the songs are b-sides and the cover art's a mess There's so much here to tear apart Listen to it for a week Now that we has passed Why I Hate This Album Podcast With Tim and Garrett Hello and welcome to another episode of Why I Hate This Album. I am one of your hosts, Garrett Harvey, with me as always, co-host extraordinaire, rotten soldier to my good time boy, Timothy Richardson. Tim, how you doing, buddy? I am a little bit discouraged this week, if I'm being honest, Garrett. Who or what has you so discouraged this week? Well, I mean, as you know, and as as most of our listeners and all of our viewers know, in addition to being a podcast studio and living quarters, this is obviously an active, a very active scientific laboratory. Um, Well, yeah. You know, the past few years, we've made some wonderful discoveries. We don't need to go into all of them, but they're there. there. You could name two, though. We've made some some discoveries in in neuro-oncology, of course, basic neuroscience. And thanks to our newest round of interns working in the temporary absence of Tom B. Rady, uh, some particle Mm. physics studies have come out. Anyway, it's not important what we've done successfully. Mm. Here's the problem, Garrett. There is an experiment that we have just been unable to crack and it is weighing on me. Oh. That, of course, is the what if coffee, but with other beans project. There is a ton of money (laughs) being left on the table in the coffee market. Based on research from Ontario Beans, there are well over 400 different types of beans and we are expected to drink coffee from only one. Uh, This is a wrong that we here at the Why I Hate This Album uh, scientific laboratories have been hoping to write. Everyone we tried, though, uh, Pinto, Disgusting. Canelli, Fava, Red, Black, Lima, Mung, Kidney, Navy, Garbanzo, Coca, et al. Soy. They've all failed. And I mean, we have, right, we have pressed and ground and roasted and drank upwards of 200 different beans. The only one that was even sort of fun was the Coca bean one, but none of them hasn't made anything even sort of resembling coffee. It's no. disgusting. Weirdly, though, universally even, all of them do cause diarrhea. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Like so coffee. So they are coffee like If you wanted that. to pivot the business, Tim, and perhaps make some sort of diarrhea juice, any one of those beans will do. We could mix them all together and make some sort of ultra diarrhea juice, but I don't know who's who's ordering that. I mean, a lot of people, Garrett. Like <laughs> coffee sort of diarrhea juice. You had a yeah. grand muffin to that and a little bit of traffic and you're playing beat the clock. Yeah. It's a fun game. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Challenge accepted. Weird. Scientific advances and horrific discoveries aside, we have a T-Rex. Well, okay, we don't. We don't. (laughs) No, we don't. You know what? That was bluster. But we did tear a very small hole in the space-time continuum. We did. We did. Three interns were sucked into it before it closed. I I don't like to think of it as sucked in. More collapsed upon. Collapsed upon. They were transported from (laughs) our universe into a universe which presumably does not have the same properties, such as oxygen. Good luck on Altair 4, gentlemen. Anyway, <laughs> Godspeed. Tim, back here on Earth, what album have we been listening to for an, an entire week straight? Well, Garrett, as the first episode of our now annual Spooksember Fest extravaganza, oh, Garrett, we have been it. listening to 21 Pilots's Blurry Face. This was suggested, of course, by Finn slash Dai Show Ryujin 95, possibly 138 times. Uh, Donald Straitif, uh, Swan. One, there's been several others. I'd just like to sure. say thanks, I guess, and keep busting. Hmm. Well put. Eloquent and succinct. Tim, after an entire week with T.O.P. and their B.F., I have to ask, do you hate this album? And be honest. Not quite Although, yet. Not quite yet. Garrett, I am I am close. I am teetering on the brink. I think with a little hard work, a little persistence, a little stamina on your part, I uh, think you can get me there this week. And Garrett, I will <laughs> welcome the release of hate. But... <laughs> not quite yet. Not quite yet. I am uh, I am anxiously awaiting my this plateau. Discussion. Anyway, the point is, Garrett, <laughs> do you hate this album? You've listened to this ad nauseum. I've, <sighs> I've, I heard you listening to it in the shower whenever I listened to you shower the other day. It was still doing that, by the way. Yeah, that's clear. Do I hate it? Been been quite a journey with this, this album, Tim. And I have to say, after numerous days of listening to nothing but 21 Pilots' Blurry Face, I'm going to come in with a shocking, you no, know, I do not hate this album. Hmm. Do you? And I think I may stay right there. Interesting. Do you like it? No. No, no, no. Come on, friend. <laughs> I still have ears. I mean, I, 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 I suppose given enough time, you could end up with some sort of Stockholm Syndrome with this album, but you and I have only experienced that ever with a single song, I think. Ooh. There, 
might be something weird going on with Insane Clown Posse. Every year I find them slightly less detestful. I find them more distasteful and I might have some sort of reverse Stockholm effect going on. <laughs> Interesting. Well, maybe that's the yin and yang of this friendship. Well, you know what? That's the thing, though. We'll get another data point later this month in the presumably final episode of the December Spook Sember Fest, whatever it's called. <laughs> it's called nothing. There was n <laughs> there was no vote. This is not sanctioned. Well, you are a scab, Garrett. This episode, this week, this album, mm, little spooky. You're right. It is. I'm not going to argue in the least. A little spooky. And in fact, Tim, boy, I, you know what? I can't. I, I, I'm going to zip it up. Put a button on it because that's not where we're at yet. Before we can talk about the album, I want to remind the listener, myself, what's your history with this band? Had you ever, I obviously, from our now infamous previous episode on 21 Pilots, which I do not remember, you've obviously heard them before, but have you ever heard their masterpiece, Blurry Face? As far as I knew, prior to this week, I had not, but a lot of these songs kind of sound vaguely familiar, something overheard, maybe in the past seven years or however long it's been since this has come out. I don't know. Maybe it's the fact that there's like samples or stolen melodies close <laughs> to other things. I don't know. But a lot of these felt vaguely familiar. Now, Garrett, I would of course ask if your Taijo has yet been Josh Dunned. I, of course, I know it has. We did an episode on this band already. And I actually went back and I listened to that episode. Oh, um, no. Mostly because I kept confusing this band with other bands. More on that later, probably. But, Garrett, mm -hmm. you've been Jolivert before. Jolliver, the hairless, <laughs> emphysematous, dialysis <laughs> requiring imaginary friend bear. Cat bear. His bear eye cat. was leaking. Anyway, so leaky. The point is. Jolliver is, it was born of 21 pilots. That's right. That makes so much sense. It's terrifying. Yes. And I feel like it's interesting because on this one, he has a similar character. He just That's named what I mean. it. Yeah. This this I, time I'm he saying... actually named it. We, we predicted, having only listened to the album that happened before this, we, I, I should say, you predicted this character uh, and just gave it a slightly different, better name. That's that's amazing. <laughs> However, <laughs> there's a chance I had heard Blurry Face by the time we did 21 Pilots. Oh, so was Jolliver just some sort of cheap knockoff of Blurry Face? Is that what it's over here? Yeah, it okay. seems, <laughs> seems like at this point. No, 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 I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It would be delightful if it were, but unfortunately our show's not that funny. Yeah, no, it makes all the sense in the world. We're going to dive right into the general thoughts in just a moment, so I'm going to hold my tongue. But yes, Tim, you said it right up front. Uh, it would seem there's a bit of a, a theme here. These guys like to sing about their imaginary friends. Friends. Or not so imaginary, we'll see. I, th well, well, yeah, we will see. <laughs> But before we can, it is customary here on the show for us to learn a little bit about the band that made the album and the album's history itself. But Tim, you've done that work before, so I'm curious, what do you have in store for us this week? Which way you want to go with it? Are we just going to play last time's history? You have a new history? You're going to do some weird, awkward history about 21 pilots that died in a tragic accident in 1947? What do you got? Take us on a journey. Help us understand. Who is 21 pilots? 21 pilots are proud, proud Ohioans, Garrett. The main guy, Ty Joe. AKA Tyler Joseph, AKA Tyler Robert Joseph, AKA Tyro Joe. No, oh, God damn it. You come on, that's worse. Fun. That's fun. He's one of these freaks, these, these detestable human beings that have three first names. It's disgusting. Anyway, he was born in. What's his middle name? Robert? Yes. Tyler. I would argue Tyler's not a first name or a last name. Anyway, he was born in Columbus, Ohio to a Jamaican math teacher slash basketball coach mom and a hmm. Jamaican Christian high school basketball coach and principal father. The internet felt the need to try and claim he was Lebanese, but he's Jamaican. <laughs> That's so weird. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've listened. I've heard this guy's voice. <laughs> he was raised by Jamaicans. Anyway, Ty Rojo was super into basketball, playing on the high school team. He met another 21 pilot, Nikki T, while playing youth basketball, and also while singing the Star Spangled Banner together at one of their games. Now, in 2007, Ty Rojo began uploading <laughs> comedy sketches to a YouTube channel called slushy guys, which is pretty cool. There's nothing stupid about making a comedy show that no one asked for and forcing it upon the internet. That is a legitimate form of art. Yeah, he was very cool. Also... Can't make fun of that at all. <laughs> <laughs> Just want to be really clear. It's impossible. Yes. He was also super into the Lord, our God, his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, and of course, <laughs> the Holy Spirit. He was partially homeschooled, partially Christian schooled, and super hmm. into DC talk. The internet <laughs> says that both of the guys that end up being 
are playing on this album grew up in a very strict Christian household where they had to either conceal their albums from their parents or find, quote unquote, faith friendly counterparts. Hmm. The drummist, Dunn, said he would hide albums like Green Day's Dookie under the bed. His parents would find Christian alternatives and make him listen to that. However, Tyro Joe's very first band that he was into was Christian rap rock group DC Talk. Do you remember DC Talk, Garrett? Can't can't say that I do. Did we do a whole album or just a song? Whole album. What will people think when they hear that I'm a Jesus freak? <laughs> what will people do when they find that it's true? Oh, oh. You remember? That's, oh, you I remember. do remember. Yeah. Uh, is that the, my best friend, he grew oh, up in a manger? People think I'm strange. Does strange. that just make me a make strange? Me a stranger. Stranger. My best friend was born in a manger. We should do another DC Talk <laughs> album. Jesus Absolutely. Christ. Doesn't really matter. This kid doesn't have any friends. Joke's on you, asshole. Jesus is my best friend. Why is everyone laughing? <laughs> Interesting. I feel like you're trying to hurt my feelings intentionally. Tyro Joe was originally planning on being a basketball star, he received a scholarship to Otterbein University, but he Fake. heard a guy play music that wasn't DC Talk once, and so he decided that music could be good and he should do that, so he went to The Ohio State instead. Hmm. His initial experience playing music was on an old keyboard that he had found in a closet, which I believe was a discarded Christmas gift from his mom, and he made an early solo album called No Fun Intended, P-H-U-N, with Nikki T playing guitar on it. The title of that album, in case you didn't notice, is a pun about puns, which is really <laughs> kind of fun, and it lets you know how fun and clever these guys are. They're just they're just joking around, Garrett. They're having fun. Folks, get ready for about 90 minutes of pure frivolity. Yes. It's all fun and clever. From, yes. Yeah. I don't want to I don't want to spoil a thing. It's not sex. We can say that much. Ooh, you know what? We can <laughs> say that much. While I can't necessarily say we'll stay, yeah, you know, things might get after dark, but this is not sexy. It won't right. be sexy. No, no. Uh, anywho, uh, 21 pilots were formed in Columbus, Ohio by Tyro Joe, uh, Nikki T, and Chris Sala in 2009. Their stated purpose for making music, which is a thing people have to do before they start a band, is to, quote, yep. make people think uh, as well as to encourage them to find joy in what they come to believe in life. Now, Tyro Joe came up with the band's name uh, from an Arthur Miller play. It was about a man whose uh, decision sending out faulty airplane parts for the good of his business caused the death of 21 pilots during World War II, <laughs> and Tyro Joe thinks that the stories, themes, and moral dilemmas choosing between the easy and the right decision inspired the name of the band, and also the formation of the band. Uh, they chose Wait. not to, they chose not to go with the names Bicycle Thief and Chill Coat. <laughs> Unclear I, what inspired those names. I am shocked that they're just like, yeah, I, I really think this literature really inspired the creation of the band. You were made Making music. Yeah. Like, it's fine if that's where you got your name, but like, that's not why you, you know, I just got done reading that book and was like, I need to make a band. And it's going to sound, you know, well, I don't want to say anything. Yet. Counterpoint, Garrett. Neutral Milk Hotel. They are not the example of anything normal. Although not the last <laughs> time I will be bringing up that band this this episode. Interesting. Terrifying. Arousing. <laughs> the 21 Pilots played clubs around the Ohio State. They wore some costumes and some masks. They did backflips and other related nonsense on stage. To get the attention that their music otherwise would never have possibly received. And also Tyro Joe's mom, Kelro Joe, handed out tickets to their shows at The Ohio State University, asking people to come see her bowler play music. And that's very <laughs> sweet. She is a sweet lady who only wants the best from her son, and we will not be disparaging her here unless Garrett possibly has some mom material. I do I don't. Okay, good. They released an uh, initial self-titled album in 2009. They toured Ohio, and they put some songs out on SoundCloud and did Battle of the Bands which attracted Josh Dunn, a drumist, to perform with them. They also performed at churches. They were on some gospel rock compilations and Christmas albums. And then Nikki T and Chris Sala left or were possibly kicked out. Sala ended up working for a carpenter and Nick, humiliating 
recently, uh, worked for the band as their merch guy. Yeah, I saw that. That's got to be tough, right? Yeah, that's that's not what you want. That's, hey, you guys think uh, maybe on the this next album I could get in there and mix it up like the old days? No, nah, man, you're going to sell shirts. Yeah, yeah. He got demoted oh. to intern. Oof. Could yeah. you imagine how much hostility there would be in this studio if one of us were demoted to intern? <laughs> hostility? So I, I would... Here's what we should do. Are you familiar with one of the <laughs> classic shows of our time, Undercover Boss? <laughs> of course. Oh, bad idea coming in three, two, <laughs> one. Go ahead. One of us should go on vacation for a couple of weeks. And now, of course, we're not really on vacation. I tell you mm-hmm. this. We've disguised ourselves and come back as a newly hired intern. One, mm-hmm. to spy on them because I don't know what the fuck they're up to. And yeah. two, just to see how they would treat us. And if they treat us poorly, Garrett, we, we turn that on them and deliver it to them tenfold. Yeah, not realizing, yeah, yeah, that they're being mean to their boss. Oh, slash, yeah. what is it? What is it when you have like power of attorney over somebody? Their god. There it is. <laughs> That's how I think of myself, anyway. <laughs> this band then released Regional at Best in 2011, and now Josh Dunn is on drums, and they're sort of performing as a two-piece. And for that album, they did an album release show. You want to guess where? That's uh, right, Garrett. New Albany High School. Well done. <laughs> oh, later. <laughs> That's gonna be my second guess. <laughs> later in 2011. 11, they played uh, the Newport Music Hall in Columbus. They got some record label attention, eventually signing with Fueled by Ramen, an Atlantic record subsidiary. They released an EP in 2012, followed by a tour with Neon Trees and Walk the Moon. In 2013, they released their third album, Vessel, which was a now classic episode of this show. They performed yes. pretty exclusively for that tour in like ski masks, again, to draw attention that would otherwise not be there for their actual music. They played sure. a bunch of summer festivals they released the album of the week, Blurry Face, on March 16th, 2015, and then toured the US, Europe, Asia, and Australia pretty extensively. I just want to say, New Albany sounds like a made-up Simpsons town. It does, yeah. Ogdenville and New Albany. Yeah, okay, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they also released the song Heathens for the end credits and also soundtrack of the Suicide Squad movie. The, that's the, the 2016 version, the James Gunless, a.k.a. Garrett's favorite version of Uh, Suicide Squad. You're going to do that. Do you think it's worse than the other one? Yes. Of course I do. I like the gun one. Everybody likes the gun one. (laughs) All right. Why do you have to make me have the worst taste in the DC? What is it? Not the DC. What are we? The N-U-I-E-I-U-E-C? I-U-C. In universe universe continuity. Doesn't matter, Garrett. Sorry. It is a cinematic. You made that terrible too. (laughs) It's a cinematic universe and it will be respected as such. They continue to tour. They continue to rack up sales and awards and whatever. They did a collabo EP with Mute Math. Uh, Then in 2018, they started releasing dumb cryptic messages online, uh, posting letters from a character named Clancy. And I'm going to say, that's objectively stupid. What kind of fucking maniac would write letters attributing them to a fake person and then post them online or on Instagram or whatever, just in a bid to gain attention? Fuck these guys. You need more to do. Right? This was, of course, all a ploy to get people interested in their fifth album, Trench, which is about the character Clancy, I guess, uh, which worked. That album sold well. Well, too. Uh, the tour was successful. Well done, fellas. In well, so hold on, just to be clear, the album after Blurry Face is, and we haven't listened, so we don't know for sure. But by all accounts, about yet another made-up character, possibly named Clancy. Yes. What is going on with this guy? I don't know, Garrett. I think he is racked by. Here's the thing. I, I think that it's pretty obvious that he is being haunted. Yeah, it does sound like a classic haunting. Yeah, or wildly out of control imagination. Could be that. I mean, it could also be a series, like this guy is rich, right? He's he's making a lot of money. So it could be that there's a series of people in his life that are doing sort of Scooby-Doo-esque ploys, pretending to be ghosts Mm. to trick him out of his money. Yeah. Never rule it out. That's why you can never let your friends know how much money you have. Yeah. And if you see a ghost, you you gotta try and get that mask off. And sometimes, honestly, if you see see somebody that you think might be somebody else, which happens from time to time, people wear masks. It is, I fully support, if you see somebody and you suspect they might be someone else, try and pull that mask off. Yes, but Tim, here's where you and I diverge. You have to respect at a certain point when A, you <laughs> facial can't get integrity. that mask off. <laughs> yeah, facial integrity, beautifully said. And B, somebody's insistence that they are who they say they are and I that they are not wearing a mask. Here's the thing. I have actually found that a lot of people that I know or that I used to know, they weren't actually the people I thought they knew. They were these terrifying <laughs> ghosts, these monsters, these no. screaming 
fucking skeleton men under there. It was horrible. Right. Yes. Just really Screaming, upsetting bleeding stuff. bleeding skeletal men <laughs> under those masks. Right. Anyway. <laughs> in 2020, uh, in April 2020, 21 Pilots released the song Level of Concern about COVID-19 anxiety. Hmm. Panic on the brain, world gone insane, blah, blah, blah. It's not very good. They do have the wondering would you be my little quarantine. So <laughs> I, think, I think they're trying to make it sexy. These guys are mm. not good at sexy. Yeah, I listeners write in. Is anybody fucking to this? I'm not. Oh, this it'll is be so not. jarring. <laughs> call me blurry face. Ugh, I'll call you Clancy, maybe. <laughs> I wasn't talking to you. <laughs> 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 in Ugh. 2021, they released the album Scaled and Icy, notably an anagram of Clancy is Dead. And then they did the Takeover Tour, where they went uh, for a week to each city that they were touring in, and did both large venues and small clubs, which I think is genuinely a good idea for bands, just maybe yes. not this one. That year, they also acted in a Chipotle commercial, Garrett... Did you watch that? Uh, no, of course not. Oh, it's a very apt metaphor for their career. It's interesting because it's not like, like they get really into it. Like they seem to be having mm -hmm. just the time of their lives promoting Chipotle. I don't know what that means. They're super into Chipotle, Garrett. They're just like rubbing the burritos all over their faces. Pretty like, much, what's happening? yeah. Well, that can't be accurate. <laughs> well, then you're going to have to watch it to find out. <laughs> Did you watch it? Yes, I mean, I this is just a ploy to make me watch a commercial you didn't watch. That's not a funny joke. <laughs> no, it's a ploy to make you watch a commercial I did watch. I like watching commercials with you. Ugh. Maybe we'll go to Chipotle. Garrett, here's the weird thing. In New York City, Chipotle mm. smells fucking amazing. I don't know if it's because of like the space constraints. They're like piping the <laughs> like the grill smell out onto the front door. Every yeah, time I, so. I walk past a Chipotle in this city, Jesus Christ, it's the best smelling restaurant I've ever walked by. Yeah, don't be fooled. Yeah, that's true. No, I mean, you go into it. it it's just Chipotle. It's bean coffee. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe Tired rice. Soup. What if we make some sort of rice beverage? What? I think they make rice wine. That's like vinegar. It, it doesn't matter. Well, Garrett, they make rice wine vinegar as well. Oh. Isn't sake a rice wine? Oh, yes. You know what? This has already been done. Go to your room. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Garrett, that's the history of LaFace. Shia LaBeouf to you. Well done, I guess. I don't care. Uh, <laughs> that brings us to general thoughts. Thank God. Let's get into this fucking album. My gentle Jesus, it's long. Yeah. Uh, well, here's what we should say first. So the reason I listened to the previous episode is I looked on the internet. I typed in 21 Pilots dick measuring. I typed in hmm. Tyro Joe dick, dick sizes, all sorts of things because I could not tell hmm. the difference between these guys, Imagine Dragons and Chain Smokers. Somehow in my brain, all of those idiots have combined into a single band. There's masks, there's dick measuring, there's Mormonism. I what? honestly thought these guys were the dick I measurers. See. That's Chain Smokers. That's very Chain confused. Smokers. Okay. I, we all were for a minute there. Yes, our legendary episode on the chain smokers does address their incessant need to measure their penises or at least talk and about it's it. It's a ridiculous way to measure. It's, I mean, there's only one true way. From the root. No, Garrett. No, come on. From the, you know better from than this. the top. No, no, no. Listen, the only true way is it doesn't matter how big it is. You're just comparing it mm. to somebody else's, right? You just you want to know, hey, do I have a bigger wiener than my friend? Like, that's the only reason I, to do this. I guess. Wait. So. <laughs> So you're my point is, uh -huh. if you're just trying to see which one is bigger, here's what you do. You both drop just trail, yep. achieve erection, face mm -hmm. each other, and walk mm -hmm. slowly toward one another. <laughs> Whichever one touches first, that's the bigger penis. Done. I've saved you some time, chain smokers. <laughs> You've thought about this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I have. I, my only, and I can't believe I'm going to continue <laughs> down this lane. My only thing, Tim, is depending on that erection, we might have more of an up than out situation. I mean, okay. So, I mean, maybe it, it hmm, hmm. Yeah. So you're saying you would be so aroused by this situation. <laughs> That's not what I mean at all. I'm just saying, That's hypothetically. Okay. I mean, I'm, um, hey, hey, I'm going to be yeah, into it I know too. there's no judgment. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes, that. <laughs> anyway, we're so painfully close to talking about this album. Oh, yes. Sorry, we the move album. Off the yes. Dicks? Most of these songs are indistinguishable from songs on Vessel. They are pretty interchangeable. Yes. I would argue better production on this album. I think so too. And I think there's maybe a little more variation in the sound. Like there's the, there's a yeah. couple songs that are just like, oh, hey, we're doing like a, like a Avit Brothers for some reason. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's an apt comparison, but like with a dash of AJR. Yes. There's a a lot of AJR. It's, it's, so, okay, what kind of music is this, 
right? Yeah, there's, it's impossible. Because there's depression rock. There is the the pop, but like the AJR type of pop. There's sure. folk, there's pop punk, there's electro pop, there's some hip hop, there's- Dubstep, drum step. There's a lot of reggae. That's just a bit of trap. And I don't understand, is this to distract from something, right? Because a lot of these songs, they just Shock stop. and awe. And they, exactly. They stop, they start up in a different style. It's jarring. It's exhausting. They do this repeatedly. If I could give you one piece of advice, 21 Pilots, just stick to a single song per song, please. I have a real problem with the front half, back half situation going on in this album. Front half, I'm on, not on board per se, but I'm engaged. I'm engaged. It's interesting. We can talk about it. The last four songs on this album, I just don't care. Yeah. And I think it's weird because that's really where he gets into the crux of the blurry face of it all. Absolutely. Well, it's all over the place. Well, that's where, it's all that's over. where it comes to a head, I think. Yes. That's well put. Yeah. And we'll, of course, get into the details there. Yeah. It's also a little bit of a shame, too, because parts of this album are really good and parts of it are really fun. Like, there's good music on yes. here. There's some interesting yes. material. The problem is it's just incoherently presented. Yeah. It also, there's too much for me. Yeah. It's dense and repetitive, whereas you can, I was going to say you could be one or the other. That's not true. You can be dense, but you got to be saying something. If it's dense for the purposes of just a lot, I just get overwhelmed and bored. Yeah, absolutely. We should just discuss probably the core concept allegedly here, right? So yeah, it's named after a character the band created called Blurry Face. Now, according to Tyro Joe, this quote unquote represents all the things that I as an individual, but also everyone around are insecure about. And he also likes to wear black paint on his hands and neck during the live performances to represent Blurry Face. And he says, it's very dramatic, I know, but it helps me get into that character. Now, I have more advice for Tyro Joe. Fully commit. Paint everything black. Paint every head to toe, especially that head and face. Everything yep. and perform like that. If painting your neck helps you get into character, just think about how into character you will be if you paint that face black. Short lived. Yeah. Uh, and it's also it's wow. it's a real shame though because blurry face sounds like a terrifying monster akin to Slender Man, and I think it mm -hmm. might be. But the way he describes it, like this could be a truly spooktacular album if they just leaned into blurry face the terrifying monster that's clearly haunting this guy that could have been a real fun album yeah but that's not what we get here right yes it's i don't know it's it's his we get pg blurry face right it's you could even do it differently so if if you're saying this is this is his insecurities things he's ashamed of just make it the personification of all your weird christian sinful urges right getting caught <laughs> masturbating in all closets around your house all of which just happen to have your mom's shoes in them it's a oh, phase God. it's weird the point is, like, <laughs> that's at phase. least entertaining. <laughs> See it, doctor. Yeah. I mean. I mean, I guess there's worse things in the world if you want to jizz all over your mom's shoes. But is it that it's your mom's shoes or it's just the only lady's shoes that this person has access to? Well, there's a huge difference. Is the, yeah, that's the crux of the whole thing. Okay. Wait, <laughs> you're saying it's up to the reader to determine? No, no, no. I'm saying oh, whether okay. or not it's a it's a problem I that see. needs to be addressed like with like a psych hold Professional. versus just outpatient therapy is, is <laughs> that's the answer. Versus a stern talking to. Mm. Not in my house, damn it. Those I, are my, that's my wife shoes. If anybody's going to come on these shoes, it's me. Well, I think that's where we get it from. I learned it from watching you. Anyway, the point is, either go with uh, this is the weird Christian like pseudo sins, or this is the blurry face. The like, I go, yeah, sometimes, me, me... sometimes when I'm standing in the bathroom, I click the lights off and just the face in the mirror starts to get blurry and I don't know what that means. I think it might be coming for me. Yeah, that's not bad. But yeah, we're going to get into all the dimensions of this alleged blurry blurry face in just a few moments, but it, it is so, it's so not scary. Yeah. Just make it an album about how you can't remember people's names because you have face blindness. Yeah. That is an affliction. Yes. I apologize to all the listeners I met at last month's Why I Hate This Album Fest. It's, uh, I know I've met you before. I'm so sorry. And just remind me, Tim, why did we make that invite only? Well, you don't want just anyone showing up. Ideally, it's so that I could remember faces and names right. because I invited those specific low. people, you know? Sure. But nope. Yeah. Wow. Get the invite. All right. Well, then I guess we've kind of squeezed this orange. Are we ready to get into oh, the song by song? The only other thing I want to mention. So the claim is, of course, that this is an album made by two guys. 
anyways, right? Oh. But <laughs> that's not even sort of true. There are 18 no. people in addition to Tyro Joe on the production side. There are eight additional musicians here, including a man named Lunch Money Lewis. I don't know if you noticed that. This is not two guys. This is 1.11 Slipknot units. Yeah. Now, ironically, despite all those extra hands in the pot, Josh Dunn remains the Meg of this situation. <laughs> yeah, I do love that like Tyro Joe, he does pianos, keys, organ, ham and organ, synth, ukulele, guitar, bass, synth bass, programming of beats, tambourine, sings, and has Writes. 100% of the songwriting credit, and Josh Dunn plays the gr- drums. And I'm Josh. I play drums. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Poor Josh. Cool. Hey man, I'd love to be a Josh Dunn. Honestly, he's a good drummer. He's a great drummer. Uh, both of these guys are very talented. Cannot stand most of what they create together. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe they'd be great if they worked with other people. Like, mm. maybe get Tyro Joe, get him in like a rack on tours situation and get Josh Dunn playing with literally anybody else. <laughs> Just get him out of there. Yeah. Just a, a rendition of Josh Dunn. <laughs> I wonder if you were to put Tyler Joseph next to Beck, if the two would just explode. Maybe. I mean, or, or it'd be perfect to be like, and then I thought maybe we'd just have like a jazz solo next. And he's like, yes, yes. <laughs> and this might sound crazy, but what if I just put like break beats in the background? Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> Can I just be moaning into a microphone and like with a lot of reverb? Oh man, totally. <laughs> this is going to be great. <laughs> just sounds like a whole fucking nightmare. It sounds like the world ending. <laughs> I want yeah. it to sound like the end of the world. Okay, Tim, enough foreplay. Let's dive into the main event. Let's hit the song by song track numero uno, Heavy Dirty Soul. we start out with a sample, at least is an it? interpolation. According to the internet, it is. It sounded different okay. to me, but it was similar enough that I looked this up and allegedly this starts off with an, a sample or interpolation or something of Amen Brother by the Winstons, the sample. Yep. Making an appearance and again, ratcheting the quality of this song up by 25%. And folks, I'm going to do my best to call out the style of song throughout each song because it does change so often. We open with rap and- oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm not in love with it. It's very quick. He's, I'm impressed by that. Well, he's definitely trying to sound eminem with the raps. Well, yeah. Okay. Yes and no. At first, that was my position. But as I listen to this song over and over and over again, I think it sounds like Moby rapping. No, maybe. I think this whole song has a Moby feel. There's an infestation in my mind's imagination. I hope they choke yeah. on smoke. I feel like that yeah. sounds like Eminem. I, I see what you're saying. Uh, it's I not think a good Eminem, edge. but sure. it's, it's, it's Eminem. It's aspirational. Inspirational Eminem. I see what you're saying, but I think one of this guy's weirdest qualities that I'll put in the pro column is that he like sings, raps, talks, and some weird fourth thing that he does in his songs. And it all is kind of his just screams. And it's all just that same like generic white guy voice. Yeah, I'm going to put that in the negative column. Okay. Agree to disagree. Uh, Let's see. Uh, Yeah, I thought this had a, a real Moby feel. Not the good Moby, the... Like the ones we just did. And it does begin with fast rapping. Let's get into it. There's an infestation in my mind's imagination. I hope that they choke on smoke because I'm smoking them out the basement. This is not rap. This is not hip hop. Just another attempt to make the voices stop. Rapping to prove nothing. Just writing to say something. Okay, he's got a brain fe- infestation of alleged insecurities. I'm going to go ahead and move him. I'm going to rebrand it, Tim. I'm going to call it negative thoughts. And this already sounds like my high school poetry. So Let's just go ahead and say that. It does the only... So it sounds like high school poetry written by you if you had demons in your head. Okay, yeah, that's true. Or just instead of hitting people and getting angry at my parents, I had written down my emotions or tried to use complex metaphors. Well, you did try. You did all those things, but oh, right, it, was just, that's right. it was just gross and sad. Here's the problem though. So if, if this is all bullshit, right? If this is just him, like if, if he does not have like legitimate demons that he is trying to, trying to tamp down here, this is mm-hmm. just stolen mental illness, Valor. Sure. No, he has, he has demons. Okay. I, I think there's demons. Okay. Okay. Good. And he <laughs> wants to call out, this is not rap. It's not hip hop. Don't even, and I think this is smart personally. First song up 
up top, just be like, hey, this is just going to be a whole jumble of nonsense. Don't try to label it. <laughs> Might be the smartest thing that they do on the whole yeah, album. Yeah, the problem is he's definitely rapping when he says this is not rap. Well, sure. But you wouldn't call the album a rap album. No, no. But I would call what he's doing right at that moment. Shut up. <laughs> Song continues. Because I wasn't the only one who wasn't rushing to say nothing. This doesn't mean I lost my dream. It's just right now I got a really crazy mind to clean. And if I understand that correctly, he is saying that, uh, well, one, he is not going to be just another one of these people that is rapping and saying nothing with his raps because he, we're going to get into it a lot. He has a real problem with the, the rap and pop music scene. This doesn't mean I've lost my dream. It's just I'm crazy right now. I have to go clean my crazy mind and then I'll get back to the musical dream, right? I guess. We'll, we'll yeah, go with just that for the for sake now. of mm-hmm. brevity. Sure. Then we get to, I think, the pre chorus, and I love the pre chorus, Tim. I don't. <laughs> Gangsters don't cry, therefore, therefore, I'm Mr. Misty-Eyed, therefore, I'm, I'm Mr. Misty-Eyed. That's fantastic, Tim. I've seen you. Well, I get misty. You just weep openly if anybody leaves you alone for 20 minutes. That's my question. Is he crying? No, he's got to keep it misty. Okay, so he's holding the tears in because he's a gangster. Gangsta? Right, and that makes, well, yeah. Well, you know, I don't, remains to be seen. Gino, check the A on that. Is he dead? No. 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 There you go. Sorry, it looked... I thought that was it. I think we would have finished the episode to be fair. Yeah, listen, his wife doesn't need, we just, we just delete the part where we discover he's dead. His wife does not need to know. Editor's note, please remove the part where we discover the corpse and continue the episode. (laughs) All right. Anyway. Yeah. So he wants to be a gangster and I, I don't understand this putting on a brave face to be a gangster. So he remains misty eyed, which by the way, not so tough. I guess you can always blame the wind or carry around a satchel of onions constantly and be like, no, that's these. But who's he trying to be? A gangster for nobody mistook you for a gangster. I think he's trying to look tough in front of his demons, so they're oh. you know so so they're not they're not just going to push him over. They're going to have to work for it. And you know what? That's fair. Demons can smell fear. Yes. Then we get into the chorus, which is ridiculous. He says, "Can you save? Can you save my? Can you save my heavy, dirty soul? Can you save? Can you save my? Can you save my heavy, dirty soul for me? For me? Oh, can you save my heavy, dirty?" soul, etc. It goes on like that. You get the point. Couple of questions here. Sounds like a dance song, like an edgier AJR, in my opinion, or a less edgy Moby, depending on which direction you're looking from. Here's my question, Tim. One, who is he asking to save his soul? And why is that soul so dirty and heavy? Well, Garrett, I'm glad you ask. You see, he was raised a good <laughs> DC talk listening Christian boy. Right. This is his dirty, dirty soul. He's asking God. This is a backdoor Christian song. He's asking. Oh, he is... Uh-huh. He, he is interpreting his own demons, his own mental illness as sin, you see. Hmm. How tragic. Now, folks, do not Google Shave Bears. Do not Google Mr. Hands. Do not Google Backdoor Christian. Oh, yes. I, <laughs> I'm i so sorry. I'm so sorry. Yes, but it is. Yeah. It's sure. No, it's, no, you're not wrong to say it. I'm just saying somebody might be like, oh, that's a clever way to say that. And then Google it and get kicked off of uh, the library browser. Right. Yes. At least just don't throw just a don't VPN Google. on. Just don't Google it. There's yeah, no you know, just don't Google it. it. Yep. Mm-hmm. yep. Good call. Good call. So he's got a heavy, dirty soul for possibly mental illness. Now, knowing obviously that the album is called Blurry Face, knowing that there is a song called Blurry Face, I began there is to question- There's no song called it, Blurry Face. Oh, right. That's what is it? Stressed out? Yes. Whatever. Knowing that the album's called Blurry Face and knowing there's a song entirely dedicated to the titular face, I was wondering perhaps this was a Faustian bargain with a hellspawn known as Blurry Face. Okay. Can you save my heavy, dirty soul? Interesting. Okay. Okay, so how about this? Maybe his God and his Christian upbringing has convinced him that he's super sinful, and he is interpreting the demons that are in his head as God. He has mistaken them for God. He's he's a little confused because there's more than three of them, and as we all know, there are only three gods, uh, Jesus Christ, Christ. uh, the Lord Father, and of course, the Holy Ghost. Uh, That's not important. The point is, is. there's at least four people in that head, his demons, his blurry (laughs) blurry face, and and uh, he's a little confused, but he's going to go with it. And he's just asking them, assuming let's just, we'll just maybe, maybe God or Jesus, maybe Jesus likes doing like an offensive Japanese accent sometimes. So like it could just be the three guys. <laughs> Interesting. It would align better 
to my understanding, a mental illness. You know, if he just had auditory hallucinations that he thought were God, but is really truly this blurry face. But I think your interpretation is probably correct. Just wanted to open the door for a chance that blurry face is either, of course, a hallucination that he's now worshiping as his Lord and Savior, or potentially a demon spawn, a la Spawn, uh, from the now famous episode Spawn, the album, the Spawn soundtrack. <laughs> it's its name, I'm sorry. <laughs> Spawn the film, the album. From Spawn the film, the album, the Spawn soundtrack <laughs> is technically the name. Anyway, silliness aside, I'm going to also keep the door open, Tim, that we don't know why that soul is so heavy and or dirty. He may be up to things that we we aren't privy to and don't want to know about. Love it, although I do want to know. Gross. Uh, song continues. Nah, I didn't understand a thing you said. If I didn't know better, I guess you are all already dead. Mindless zombies walking around with a limp and a hunch saying stuff like you only live once. He's got severe disdain for probably the same people that love his music. Yeah, th- this is sheeple talk and it does seem like it would be directed at his own audience. I was trying to think of our listeners. Uh, I don't know if I would call them fans. That feels great. Gross. But listeners, for sure, and some of you I know, viewers, and some of you, personal invitees to Tim's Why I Hate This Album Fest. Well, it was ours. It was ours. Yeah, but I really feel like you spearheaded it, and then the moment I'm sorry, you were like, you hey, let's in. not sell tickets, let's just invite people like Willy Wonka, that'll be really cool, and then you sent out 23 instead of the literal thousands we could have sold. Well, maybe not thousands, hundreds. We could have sold hundred, a, Garrett, a few hundred tickets. Garrett, you know what? I love what? Jim Carrey uh-huh. movies, all right? What? What? <laughs> I had to go with 23. <laughs> that's why? That's why? Yeah. God, that's not even a good Jim Carrey movie. Garrett, it's a Jim Carrey movie. They're all a little good. No, that movie sucks. No, The only Garrett, one worse is where he's Russian. He was being stalked by a number. How do you remember that movie? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> back to this stupid song. Are you asking song. how I remember it or why do I? Re- it doesn't matter. Back to the stupid song. I apologize. Right. Uh, yeah. So disdain for his own fans. Perhaps he's even asking for salvation, Tim, to not be a heathen like these mud people that are fans of him. Oh, I uh, like calling them mud people. That seems right. uh, border- His words, okay. not mine. Yep. Uh, then we get to a really weird change in style and lines that I think are legitimately good. He says, death inspires me like a dog inspires a rabbit. And he says that a couple of times. Delivery reminds me of a band, Tim, you've probably never heard of called Placebo. They sing a song called Pure Morning. Not offhand. Uh, it's fine. Listeners, write in. Should we do an episode on Placebo's Pure Morning? I say yes, Tim. Tim says, never heard of it. But it sounds like this part right here. And I say, pretty good line. He's inspired by fear. Okay. Fear of death. Yeah. Or being I mean, consumed by a giant beast. Sure. He's being chased by some sort of literal grim reaper, some sort of final destination scenario. Perhaps some the, sort of blurry face. Perhaps the beast he's so afraid of is all those gears that are underneath like an escalator. Oh yeah. All razor sharp. Yeah. Why? I watched that <laughs> one the other day. Nobody knows. <laughs> Who knew escalators <laughs> ran on blades? Yeah. We anyway. get the chorus and outro, oh. which is half the chorus all over again a dramatic synth and drumming that builds to nothing before we get to track number two, Stressed Out. So for a time, Tim, when this song came out, Amazon Music demanded that I listen to it. And no matter how many times I said less like this, it was like, cool, but here's Stressed Out. (laughs) And so I got to say, on just with ignoring our show, ignoring how we go about these things, and before focusing on the lyrics themselves, this is a good song. Eh, I mean, it's, it's a good song. It's a catchy song. Mm-hmm. It sounds okay, but like, I'm not now. It's, uh-huh. it's a good song, not for you or I. I feel like when he gets into the My Name's Blurry Face and I Care What You Think, it loses me. Well, that's where it loses you, but I don't think that's a bad chorus. Mm. Anyway, well, let's get into it opens with some nice i don't i don't even know how to describe it that whatever that is <laughs> i like it i'm into the music it sets a good tone obviously this is the classic don't make your best song the first song on your album make it the second first one sets the stage second one is your one two punch i will give you this is definitely the best song on the album yeah they heard this and they were like shit we've got a single here boys and boy did they i think this song went diamond but yeah, uh, it did yeah this was the first rock song to reach a billion streams on Spotify and it's certified diamond. Yeah. Good God. Uh, very odd style of music. Sad rapping, emo rapping, alternative hip hop. It's depression rap. Yeah. I feel like 
Magic, a.k.a. Machine Gun Kelly, may or may not have heard this album and said, why not me? Yeah, before Travis Barker tricked him. <laughs> yeah, that was... Travis Barker, you clever bastard. <laughs> Let's get into the lyrics themselves. He's got his very like plain Jane voice, which is so odd, but uh, he begins. I wish I found some better sounds no one's ever heard. I wish I had a better voice that sang some better words. I wish I found some chords in an order that is new. I wish I didn't have to rhyme every time I sang. Funny line. I was told when I get older, all my fears would shrink, but now I'm insecure and I care what people think. Opening gambit, Tim. I'm going to let you set the stage. What do you think? Fishing for a compliment. <laughs> this That's is... terrible. No. No, Garrett. Well, so first of all, it's obviously it's about his insecurities, allegedly, right? But mm -hmm. it comes off. This is a song that is clearly designed to be a single. This is clearly designed yes. to be listened to by people that already adore him. And the whole thing, it's just, oh, I wish it was better, you know? It's, mm. this is telling like definite fans of yours that you're insecure and hoping that something that you know they're going to like isn't terrible. It's, yeah. It seems disingenuous yeah. a little bit. It seems to me like he is just saying this, hoping that he's going to get like a barrage of, man, it's awesome. Like, don't worry. Don't worry. It's so good. Yeah. No, no, you're the best. You're yeah, the best. Right, right. Yeah. Allow me to try to play devil's advocate. And I'm not saying you're wrong, Tim. Very astute observations. But, you know, let's take it fair and balanced. That is the motto of this show. Um, yeah. I trademarked. think we did trademark it. We did. 2001, I think. Oh, that was smart. Yeah. Yeah. If anybody ever uses that, we will know. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie Hoozleby. What was I going to say? Devil's Advocate, I would say perhaps he's singing more in general. And what I mean by that is how he just feels about his work. And Tim, I know for a fact, because we do know each other going on 19 years and eight months, you hate just about everything that you do and work very hard at and believe it does not live up to your own personal standards. I know that to be true. Oh, absolutely. It's why I never ever listen to anything that we do. I hate my voice and I hate the things I think and I hate the things that I thought or that I chose to say. Absolutely. As you should. That's the right Why? instinct. <laughs> Let me finish. I do as well. And the only way you can get better in this world at anything is to never be satisfied with the thing that you did. Now, where Tim and I go wrong, we never take a moment to appreciate the effort that we put into it. It's just immediately negative. Just immediately. We do it for ourselves. We do it for each other. Hell, we have a show where we're pointing out where people did their worst work. But I think in this case, he could be saying, I am constantly plagued by the same general feeling that nothing lives up to my own standards. Possible? Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Okay, then we get to the chorus. My name's Blurry Face, and I care what you think. Repeated a couple of times. And I really want to explore. And we don't have to hammer down and commit to any one of these. Now, I'm going to peel back the curtain for just a second. Tim and I, as you guys know, we've been very, very busy. And so we've had to bank episodes and reshuffle the schedule. Long story short, I've spent a significant amount of time with this album. So I have a lot <laughs> a lot of notes. So I'm not going to commit to any one storyline. You're just going to have to keep up with all three at the same time. Blurry face. What the fuck is he? <laughs> is he an imaginary friend? Is he some sort of mythical creature a la Big Mouth, like those hormone monsters? Ooh. Like it's real. Yeah. And, and yeah. Is he a hallucination? Or, Tim, my name's Blurry Face, and I care what you think. Our main character has a heavy, dirty soul. Does a man with a heavy, dirty soul care what you think? But Blurry Face does. Who is this Blurry Face really? Is he anxiety? Is he being self-conscious? Or is he a conscience? Is Blurry Face Tyro Joe's conscience? Not his anxiety, not his self-doubt, but that voice. That voice he's clearly been punching at the face for years <laughs> that says, this isn't great. Maybe don't don't show this to people. Interesting. So this is the voice blurry he face should is the good be guy. listening to. I like that. Yeah. It, I find Completely a lot of times- in mischaracterized yeah. as the bad guy. Guy. Interesting. And I think that's I think that's particularly poignant because in both of our lives and most movies, but specifically in our two lives, typically oh boy. the bad guy, really the good guy. He's doing what we should all be doing. We will leave yes. everyone up to think or to make up their own mind as to who the bad guy is at any given time because it does switch back and forth. Um, Absolutely. But yeah, no, I like that. I like that he is the bad guy and Blurry Face is the true hero here. I'm Could in. Be. Well, I don't know if I want to say hero, but 
but he could very well be the conscience of this character who's constantly not an anxiety, not a not somebody's insecurity. Don't confuse insecurity with a conscience. So a conscience to say, hey, maybe stop dirtying up that soul. Blurry face is his telltale heart, but it's some yeah. sort of Donnie Darko-esque monster that's just kind of hanging yes. out. Yeah. And and that brings me to my next question, Tim. What does Blurry Face look like? I did not anticipate the Jolliver crossover, so I am literally beaming right now. If you found the feed, this is the happiest <laughs> I've ever looked in my entire life, because I love thinking about imaginary friends, turns out. <laughs> that's Nobody write that down. Tim, did you have a concept in your mind for what Blurry Face might be? I mean, I did. I thought I always took it quite literally. Like, I thought, okay, okay. so take a picture of a man who is, let's say you're Don Draper type. Wearing clothes. Yeah, <sighs> you're Don Draper type, right? He's a, he's a he's a 1960s put together man. He's got a fedora on. He's got a nice suit. He clearly <clears throat> works in the city, right? Okay, okay. You've, got, you've got a photograph of this guy, okay? He's yeah. he's just nice. He's happy. He's going to work. He's walking amongst a crowd. You know, it's it's midtown Manhattan. There are people on both sides of him. There's It's a busy street. And then you take mm-hmm. a penny and you scratch his fucking face out. Whoa, well, oh my That's God. I think. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, and he's just walking around like that. So everywhere he goes, he sees just in a crowd of people, there's just one guy there, very well dressed, very well put together, scratched out face. What's under that face? We don't know. You can never tell. Maybe it's like a macular degeneration thing where the closer you try to look at it, the blurrier it gets. <laughs> It's like a magic guy. He's a reverse magic guy. Okay, sure. I think macular degeneration (laughs) probably says it better, but sure. Reverse magic guy. I'm a man. (laughs) You know what? I like yours better now. All right. Well, you. (laughs) Why is it John Hamm? (laughs) I just. I like John Hamm. You know, we, I don't know if you've ever mentioned this. We used to live Mm. in a place where John Hamm used to live in in Austin, Texas. And John Hamm took a claw hammer, placed it under another man's testicles and forced him to walk about a room uh, and then was asked to leave the University of Texas. Allegedly. I think that's on record. What record would that be? Oh, the schools. (laughs) Right. They kicked him out. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Right. Because he's a monster. All right. Well, let me describe my blurry face. Speaking of monsters. Eight feet tall. Picture an eight foot tall stack of dirty sheets in the the rough shape of a man. But here's what makes him blurry face. Because if you're picturing like a dirt and blood stained eight foot stack of sheets, like a clay face, if you will, that face can morph and change into different shapes to be different people or even objects, a la your Aladdin's uh, genie there. Okay. So blurry face uses like the gaps and the shadows inside of his gross, dirty sheets to mimic different faces that are constantly morphing now, as he talks to you. I like this. I like that it's me. So, so what if it's, what it's not completely controlled or doesn't appear to be. So kind of like at the end of Terminator 2, where oh. the, the it's, it's just sort of morphing into faces that he's been throughout. I was going to say more like a Winamp screensaver. So it just kind of changes as the, <laughs> as his inflection. Oh, and- uh, uh, no one that's listening to this got that reference. Oh, no, for sure. We have listeners that are 34 plus. Oh, okay. Maybe 38 plus. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Three, how old are you? Tim plus. Unclear. As an adult male man person, let me ask you this, friend. How much time do you spend wishing that you were a small child? Ooh, close to none. Okay. Because the chorus here goes, wish we could turn back time to the good old days when our mama sang us to sleep, but now we're stressed out. Wish we could turn back time and says it again. Except- it's, it's odd. There are certainly times in my life I wish I could go back to or relive or whatever. You know, I, it's a time when I was in college living in Austin, uh, living in the West Campus neighborhood, and it was glorious. Um, mm-hmm. But it, early childhood is not the time, right? No, like the only no. The only way that that would make sense is if his mom had died when he was like eight. But that's not the case. She's still alive. No. She's still promoting this band. Uh, she could she, fulfill she's... this weird design. She could sing him to sleep tonight. Yeah, um, there's FaceTime. Right. Now... (laughs) I mean, I, I, so, but I mean, I guess like this has to be a thing for some people, right? I mean, it's sort of the basis for like Freudian theories. Oh, I think there's tons of people that would love to move back in with their parents and be mama's boys again or girls. Yeah. But it's, it's just weird to me because like, again, the music video, it's them riding tricycles and pretending to be kids in their childhood bedrooms. And there's a lot of really good material about the loss of childhood or something like Neil Young, Sugar Mountain kind of thing, summer of 69. But it 
I'll least- take it even a different direction. I, I almost relate to this song. Almost. If he didn't want to turn back time to the good old days when mama sang us to sleep, because obviously I can't relate to that as my parents screamed me to bed. Um, <laughs> but you and I have actually talked about this in real life, IRL, as the kids are going to begin saying any day now. When you and I were like 20 to 25, maybe maybe that's too much, 20 to 23, we were just the right combination of ignorant and confident to do things that we actually shouldn't have been able to accomplish. Sure. But because we didn't know better, we just were like, yeah, I'm going to go do this thing. And then only upon years of reflection and experience, people were like, you did what? Yeah. So in that regard, I can relate. I The good old days where I didn't know any better, so I'd just be like, yeah, I'll go do that. No problem. Right, sure. You're wishing for a fun time when you were 20 to 23, not like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, these are two people that here, I, I left for university while my parents were at work, and Tim left a year, a year early. So maybe we're not the best test subjects for this, is what I'm saying. Yes. But my point is, it's I guess there's just a bunch of adults that are that like are working an assembly line in Cleveland, Ohio, but are just daydreaming the whole time how they'd rather be breastfeeding. Some sort of well, baby that man. Feels extreme. <laughs> it's not that I'm, far off. I'm sure there's somebody that's working in a factory. They have to be at a factory, that's fine. Working in a factory dreaming about breastfeeding. I guarantee that's happening. But I don't think it's a large number. Well, it's at least two people. Listeners right in. Hate bond mail at gmail.com. Do you work in a factory? And if so, do you or a co-worker often dream about breastfeeding? Not in a sexual way. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Don't want to know about that. That's weird. Yeah, that's super weird. I mean, you know, live your truth. Consensual, blah, blah, blah. But gross. (laughs) Uh, Song continues. Sometimes a certain smell will take me back to when I was young. How come I'm never able to identify where it's coming from? I'd make a candle out of it if I ever found it. I'd try to sell it, never sell out of it. I'd probably only sell one. It'd be to my brother because we have the same nose. Great. I I honestly only brought up that line because I only have that with like negative nostalgia. Like lawn clippings and Windex remind me of chores and being grounded. But like, I don't ever smell cookies and I'm just like, oh, that takes me back. Well, yeah, but you aren't allowed to have cookies because of your stomach thing. Right. Well, <laughs> alleged stomach thing. Joke's on me. It was just a mistake. <laughs> and then you kind of willed it into being, so that's good. Well, yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, Tim, is there a smell from your past that you would like to make a candle out of? Don't say me. Well, I don't know. I mean... Don't say me. Okay. Okay. Well, now <laughs> I'm... Just to be clear. But now I'm kind of stuck, you see. Yeah, I figured. Yeah. Mm. Oh, you know what would be gross is uh, if you made a candle out of uh, one of our cars from college, the smell from inside one of our cars from college. Oh, it just smelled like rock climbing shoes. Yeah. And a little like farts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like somebody had farted directly into a rock climbing shoe. Maybe I... Th- well, it doesn't matter. I don't like this question. I do like, though, that he pretends that his, suggest- uh, that his success is just sort of like pushed on him. Like, he wants to play rocket ships with his brother, but everyone makes... <laughs> you know, everyone wants him to make them money. You know, they right. used to play pretend... Get give each other different names. We would build a rocket ship and then we'd fly it far away. Used to dream of outer space, but now they're laughing at our face saying, wake up, you need to make money. Come on. I like to think that the we in that line is all of his imaginary friends that are just like, grow the fuck up, Ty Joe Ro, Ty Ro Joe, <laughs> Taekwondo. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do enjoy that. I think that maybe it's, or, or it's just blurry face, right? It is his conscience just yeah. being like, you have a child now, you fucking psychopath. <laughs> like, stop playing rocket rocket ships. He's he got listen, listen, listen. He hasn't been bathed in a week. You know, he looks like these pampers are full of shit. Yeah, he looks like that boy from Breaking Bad. Jesus Christ. Oh god. Yes. That's haunting. It was. I really like the idea that Blurry Face is the voice of reason at the very least. All right, let's move on. Track number 3, Ride. Sometimes yeah, I think about the end just way too much. Weird reggae, borderline ska beat with a really irritating horn synth that is pretty much in every song from 2013 to 2017. It's okay, that's true. I do think there are plenty of horn synths on here, but that's also odd because there's also definitely a bunch of credited horns. Oh, there's horns. Yeah. There's definitely horns. Just play the horns. Play the goddamn yeah. horns. Yeah, but they can't be pitched to a ear bleeding degree that, yeah. that these can. So we're in this weird reggae, borderline ska world. 
And man, I got to tell you, first two songs, I'm like, all right, this isn't so bad. Way to go, 21 Pilots. This is, at least we're not dealing with an Amur. And I, I can at least say, yeah, we never get to the level of the level of Amur, but this is where we start to see some cracks. Um, let's just get right into it. I just want to stay in the sun where I find. I know it's hard sometimes. Pieces of peace in the sun's peace of mind. I know it's hard sometimes. <sighs> Nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, he wants to keep having hits is the easiest way to read that. Or he doesn't want to cede control to Blurry Face or let Blurry Face take control for a little bit to, you know, maybe get some chores done, pick up some groceries, maybe set up like a, like a daycare for that kid. Yeah, exactly. Poor Blurry Face. Yeah, he just, he wants to hang out and drink Mai Tais in his backyard around his pool with his, with his buddy Josh. <laughs> he and Blurry Face is just standing there in the corner shouting at him that he listen the kids you the, have a to-do list the kid is sunbathing with you the kid is very sunburnt <laughs> that skin is new yeah this is not okay people you might go to jail for this i can't call cp cps because i don't have real fingers but if i did i'm a giant sheet man <laughs> yeah we get <sighs> in the, so it, it, when it goes into the chorus we get a real reggae breakdown and this can go fuck itself is this the oh whoa oh, oh, it oh, is oh, oh, yeah i'm fallen yeah. Okay. Let's get right into it. Uh, I want to talk about this. So the chorus goes, oh, 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 I'm falling. So I'm taking my time on my ride. Oh, oh, I'm falling. So I'm taking my time on my ride. Taking my time on my That happens conservatively 71 times in this song. And it, I don't know about you, it just grated on me. I could, it almost yeah. ruined the whole song for me. There's a, well, the song was never that good to begin with, but there's a lot of really poor decisions made on the vocals. Like he just, because because it's not just the ride thing. There's throughout this album, there's all these like yells and nonsense. That's just like, who thought this was a good idea? <laughs> yeah, it's tough. So he's taking his time on his ride because he's falling. Is I think falling is he's beginning to, oh, here's an interesting thing here. So maybe, maybe as a young man, Blurry Face came to help write the ship. And then as Tyro Joe got older, maybe he got on some, I don't want to, and this is the character to be clear, folks, not the actual man. This is all fiction. This is, this is an album. But the main character of the album maybe got on some medication, got his mind right, cleaned up that crazy mind of his. And then he starts to have those negative thoughts again. And he's he's taking his time on his ride because he can tell that he's falling. And that's that's why he needs Blurry Face to come back into his life and be like, oh, I see what's going on here. Yeah, time for me to take control again. Yeah, I think so that's he, fair. Uh, then we take a weird departure in kind of a reggae rap breakdown. He says, I die for you. That's easy to say. We have a list of people that we would take. A bullet for them, a bullet for you, a bullet for everybody in this room. But I don't seem to see many bullets coming through, see many bullets coming through through. Metaphorically, I'm the man, but literally, I don't know what I'd do. <sighs> what? Yes. So, it's just stream of consciousness nonsense. It's one of these, like, I'd take a bullet for this. This is when you get that guy that gets drunk, and he's just like, man, I'd take a bullet for you, man. Yeah. <laughs> just stop. I have a gun. We can make this happen if that's what you want. Tim, out of curiosity, um, gun to my head, would you take a bullet for me in the arm? Am I so holding I'm the gun? getting shot in the head, or you're getting shot in the arm. Right. Here's the question. Am I holding the gun? So well, like, I don't okay, see so, what... so my, my well, question that, here is, that do, that I have a, things. Hold, do I have a gun in my hand <laughs> held to your head, and the decision somehow is for me to kill you or shoot myself in the arm? Who's making me do this, Garrett? Well, n it, it definitely <laughs> wouldn't go down like that. Probably a third party would just hold the gun, or maybe both guns. Interesting. Uh, maybe. Because I, I could just see, like, the moment you have the guns, you maybe kill the guy that asked you to start all this. Well, here's my question, though. Because how do I how do I know for sure that after he shoots me in the arm, he's not just going to kill you anyway? We we don't. Okay, we don't. so then I, you know, here's the thing. How am I supposed to trust this guy? He's got a gun. You know what? I'll just take the bullet. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I apologize for asking. So this is this is one of those uh, the dumb like inspirational thing of like it's easy to die for something, but can you live for something? It's a shitty mm. movie poster thing, right? Because oh, I took it a slightly different way. I took it as a listen. I wouldn't die for you. I'd live for you though. I would just have a double life, one for me and one for you, bud. The one you didn't have because I did not take that bullet for you. Interesting. I really like that. Here's my problem. 
problem. So I have I have two more problems with verse two. Metaphorically, I'm the man. What? Um. And this was actually I think you meant hypothetically. <laughs> okay, so that's fine. This was a this was a problem on the first album because there's another line on that album, uh, the other album we did, where he says metaphorically something, which ruins the metaphor. You garbage songwriter, stop it. Just do the metaphor. <laughs> Don't say you're doing the metaphor. But like he says, I swear you had an episode where you argued that you have to call out metaphors, similes, and sarcasm in your speech. In just, my speech, sure, say. but I'm not writing uh, a Christ, song. But not in a song, right? right. I'm right. sorry. That's not because this idiot. is poetry. That's just yeah. I'm so stupid. Anyway, <laughs> metaphorically, <Sarcasm>. metaphorically, <laughs> I'm the man, but literally, I don't know what I would do. Metaphorically, right. I'm the man, but literally, is he literally not a man? Is he not literally a man? Does he not know what literally, literally means? I guess he's saying if you were to make a metaphor about saving someone, I would save them. But if I literally had to save them, I would run. Fair enough. Can't argue with that logic either from you or from him. He goes on, all these questions, they're for real. Like, who would you live for? Who would you die for? And would you ever kill? And this, I think, gets to the real crux of it, Garrett, because in the situation that you were describing, gun to your <laughs> head, would I take a bullet for you? Right. If I'm being completely honest with you, with myself, with the audience, yes. probably not. But- What? But, <laughs> listen, 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 I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it better. Okay. If, probably not it. if I'm being honest, but I think that my conscience, my blurry face, I believe it would, it would get the better of me afterward. I would kill mm. a lot of people in your way. Hey, you'd avenge me. I would do a man on fire. And here's the <gasps> thing. I might not That's... even be looking to go up a, to go up the ladder here. I might just <laughs> rampage. You just kind of grand theft auto the whole thing. Possibly. I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to shoot you in the head to find out. Oh my goodness. I mean, I gotta say, bummed to find out I'm dying. Happy to find out you're gonna man on fire all the people involved. Yes, yes. Absolutely. And I don't, listen, because I'm not, I'm definitely not looking forward to your death. Um, Thank you. But I, I <laughs> would it be worth it? You are looking forward to the revenge that will follow. Right, right. That's, that's natural. And, and I can't here's the problem that. is I can't make it happen because then I am responsible. I I can't sure. justify a revenge. So I just have to wait Real for it to 22. happen. catch You'd have to kill yourself afterwards. Right. That's just a murder-suicide. We already have a contract for that. Yep. I got an 18 count on the I've been thinking too much, and that's that's too many. Well, I want to talk about the I've been thinking too much. Yes, that is way too many. However, you're going to disagree with me here. I love the Help Me Bridge. In a, a beautiful, I'll just say it, a beautiful falsetto, we get, I've been thinking too much. I've been thinking too much. Help me. <laughs> and this goes on for a while. Just, I've been thinking too much. <laughs> over and over. And it's beautiful. I love it. And But it is, I think that Tim thinking too much is a euphemism. He's waking up with blood on his hands, that soul filthy and just led into the ground. And he's, he's calling to his savior, Blurry Face, summoning him, saying, oh no, it's happening again, Blurry. I've been thinking too much. And he's asking for help. Hmm, fair enough. Euphemism for the bad thing. Yeah, I still don't care for the way it's uh, delivered, but okay. The falsetto, you don't like the, I've been thinking too much. No, I don't. Oh, I love it. Track number four, Fairly Local. <laughs> So I get this is the Tyler V. Blurry face argument, I guess. E sure. Yeah, boy. I'm gonna say something crazy. This sounds like a Jack White song to me. Ugh, you love Off, this I know. album. Jesus Christ. Off that boarding house reach thing. Oh, absolutely. Fair enough. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. Don't care. The style is, according to the internet, drum step and electronica with, cannot be ignored, way over the top choir in the background. Yeah, it's a bit excessive. It's credited as group vocals, but Jesus Christ. Yeah, so you've got very quar- uh, quarrel. <laughs> quarrel singing. Oh, but, you know, much higher because not a man. And you've got these weird tr drum beats going on. He begins, yeah, I'm fairly low. I've been around. I've seen the streets. You're walking down. I'm fairly local. Good people now. Oh, 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 oh. That's the Jack White part. That sounds like him all day. Uh, I'm evil to the core. What I shouldn't do, I will. 
They say I'm emotional. What I want to save, I'll kill. Is that who I truly am? I truly don't have a chance. Tomorrow, I'll keep a beat and repeat yesterday's dance. Now, Tim, the big question, is it Blurry Face singing that? Who we all assumed? You know, he's a giant stained monster. Or is that the true feelings of Mr. Tyro Joe? I think it might be how Blurry Face is making Tyro Joe feel. Perhaps Blurry Face has begun to tell him or to weigh on him a bit. And so he, Tyro Joe is saying, I'm evil to the core yeah. because of what he's been shown, perhaps. But the, yeah, you're right. Blurry Face isn't evil. He's a good man. Tyler is the one that needs Blurry Face for his salvation, his conscience, his little voice that tells him stop. Yeah, they've Yo. had enough. Just stop. <laughs> he's already dead. Yo, this song will never be on the radio. Even if my click were to pick and the people were to vote, it's the few, the proud, and the emotional. He basically is saying, listen, you got to be like really emotionally deep if you want to get this song. Yeah, again, it's a very like sheeple thing, but it's also so it's well, I don't think those... it's sheeple. I think it's the opposite. I think it's I think it's saying, well, I, I guess you could say it's sheeple, but I think he's specifically saying, like, really only the emotionally intelligent are going to get this song, and that's why it can't be popular. Yeah, right. He is signaling to his audience that they have to pretend to like this to be deep. Yeah, I agree. Well, then we get a, a mirror after the chorus again, and somebody else says, I'm not evil to the core. What I shouldn't do, I will fight. I know I'm emotional. What I want to save, I will will try. Boy, that's non-committal. I, I know who I truly am. I truly do have a chance. Tomorrow I'll switch the beat to avoid yesterday's dance. Maybe maybe Blurry talked him down, uh, got him out of his fit. He's calmed for the day. No, see, I think that this is him arguing back with Blurry Face, right? He is, mm. he, Blurry Face has shown him the error of his ways and I now see. he's stepping back. He's like, no, man, I'm not evil. I, I kind of like <laughs> the way I am. And Blurry Face is going to have to do a little more work. I mean, that would explain why the line is... I I'm not evil to the core. What I shouldn't do, I won't. Or why it isn't that. And instead, it's what I shouldn't do. I'll, I will fight. Yeah. I'll try yeah. not to. I'm not going to commit to saying I won't. I have to do it. Yeah. But then the last iteration of the chorus, we get a ridiculous, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it sounds like he was trying, he's 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 auditioning for a CSI Miami theme song. I thought you were going to say he was trying to do like the FX re, the FX drama and he was playing Howard Dean. Kind of Howard <laughs> Dean. It. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that poor man. He would have been our Ask president. Ask your parents about Howard Dean, kids. Should have been our president. Yeah. And he sank his own boat. Track number five, Tear in My Heart. Tear in My Heart, unclear. Tear. Yeah, it's very clear. Song begins with a count in in Korean. An Young Hase Yo. Um, I'm into it. I'm not gonna lie. It's a great way to count in a song. You just love the uh, Arrested Development sound with the An Young. I also like that part. Fair enough. He says sometimes you gotta bleed to know that you're alive and have a soul, but it takes someone to come around to show you how. So here's the thing. He is seeing blurry face everywhere, right? He's seeing this mm-hmm. horrible monster, whatever they're, they're mm-hmm. made of. And as you know, he can't see this thing's face. But sure. He doesn't always see it. So it's possible that this thing is taking other people's forms to spy on him. I think that he is insisting that people he knows cut themselves so that he can be sure that they are who they say they are. Uh, wow. Sort of a, sort of a, the thing or ex machina or a hundred other TV shows or, or movies where somebody has to bleed to prove that they're human or not. Human. I love that. I love that. That's terrifying. How many times would you put up with that? Uh, especially because this seems to be about somebody finding a girlfriend. I think the way to do it is just to maintain a constantly dripping open cut. Yeah. 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 It's logical. So this song seems to be about that mercurial emotion known as love. He says, she's the tear in my heart. I'm alive. She's the tear in my heart. I'm on fire. She's the tear in my heart. Take me higher than I've ever been. Aside from sounding like bad poetry, I'm going to say it, Tim. Originally, I thought, okay, obviously this guy is uh, falling in love with somebody and all of that uh, depression, negative thoughts, and going down the wrong hole, or whatever he was saying. I'm sorry? Is, is she, yeah, you know, depression. Okay. Yeah, one of the earlier songs. It's all fixed. Love fixes everything. We're all good now. Don't need to worry about it. I'm sure I'll be fine. See you later, blurry face. That Seems only like an lasts easy way. for a couple months. Of course, but this guy doesn't seem to know that. Yeah. Alternative reading. What if this isn't Tyro Joe singing? What if this is our good friend blurry face, and blurry face has found love? Oh, he's found, he's found a lady who has 
has two faces. Okay. <laughs> Whatever you want, man. It could be a pony if you want it to be. No, no, no. Two faces, Garrett. It makes up for his lack of a face. Sure. All right. Double the face. Uh, but now Tyro Joe not only has to deal with blurry face, he's got to deal with his chick. Ugh. Yeah. She's here all yeah, yokoing it up. Yeah. And he's just like, it was bad enough when you were constantly like, hey, stop it. That's a bad idea. But now I got your lady here and I got to make small talk. Yeah. We have nothing in common. So you got two faces. Oh, well, that's cool. Hmm. Why are you here? <laughs> the songs on the radio are okay, but my taste in music is your face. I like it. I hate it. Jesus Christ. Really? Yeah. Just oh, don't that make like me it. laugh every time. Ugh. What kind of music do you like? Your face. Yep. Oh, okay. <laughs> yep. Do not care for it. Am right. I just way more mature than you? No, I think uh, I think you've lost all joy. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that's possible. That is possible. You, you fell asleep in my car. I drove the whole time. But that's okay. I'll just avoid the holes so you sleep fine. I'm driving here. I sit, cursing my government for not using my taxes to fill holes with more cement. So he meets this chick, falls in love with her hard, starts getting cucked out hard, sitting in a car of silent death while his girlfriend sleeps in the in the, in the the seat next to her. Very rude. Very rude. You are a navigator and you're there to make sure the other guy doesn't fall asleep. It's possible. So maybe Blurryface's girlfriend has fallen asleep in their car. That's what I was thinking. And, and Blurryface, we don't know how they like kind of appear and disappear. So he's like, oh, I got to go check on another uh, whiny kid. I'll be back later. Yeah. And so he's just like, I'm just going to hang out with her. She's asleep. I, can I turn the radio on? I wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he's just stuck there. That's blurry faces. A son of a bitch. Did you uh, notice? The bridge oh, is, oh, go ahead. No, no, I'm fine. The bridge is what I just read two more times. Uh, and then some lines from the chorus. And the outro did give me pause. She's the tear in my heart. She's a carver. She's a butcher with a smile. Cut me farther than I've ever been. All of these words are about abuse and violence. Yes. Okay. All of his songs are about depression and sadness and abuse and violence and Christianity. It's a, it's a whole horrible mix. <laughs> it's coming. Track number six, Lane Boy. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I consider this just to be a complete hiatus in the album. An oasis to complain. Yeah, it seems like a direct response to their critics at parts. Yeah, literally, Taijo says, quote, I broke character and became a frustrated human. For a moment, I don't imagine needing to say things like that anymore. I rem remember showing that song to some people and they said, I don't think you should say that. <laughs> <laughs> End quote. Oh, yeah. Uh, I once again, it's the weird reggae ska feel, then the rap, and the end of the song literally just turns into an EDM dubstep lunacy that I can't even explain. Fair enough. They do seem to imply that being being well off is just as hard as being poor. I wasn't raised yeah. in the hood, but I know a thing or two about pain and darkness. If it wasn't for this music, I don't know how I would have fought this. It's All just right. a bad look. It's just a bad look, I think. I wasn't raised in the in the hood, but I, you know, I had it just as bad, I think. Like yeah. you ever see you ever see those that first season of The Wire? My uh, and my then did you ever see like the squid and the whale? Yeah, exactly. Pretty much the same. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Your brother is a Philistine. <laughs> um, let's see. Yeah, the song is over and over. They say, stay in your lane, boy, lane, boy, but we go where we want to. They think this is a highway, highway, but will they be alive tomorrow? So tired of people commenting on their weird mix genre approach to music. They imply that they are the future and their enemies will be killed. Fair enough. Regardless of all these songs I'm hearing are so heartless, don't trust a perfect person person and don't trust a song that's flawless, honest. Uh, fair enough. I can agree with that general sentiment, but it is a common theme that he just pretty much thinks other music that's very similar to his music is garbage. Yeah. It's not emotional enough, Tim. Well, Garrett, nothing ever really matches up to what they're doing. They're pioneers. Exactly. Which makes the following verse very confusing. There's a few songs on this record that feel common. I'm in constant confrontation with what I want and what's a poppin'. In the industry, it seems to me that singles on the radio are currency. My creativity is only free when I'm playing shows. Uh, so even he knows some of this is at least a little bit filler. Weird uh, to yeah. admit it on the record, though. Yeah. Track number seven, The Judge. Who's ready for a ukulele? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nobody. It's, it's jarring, and it's not going to be the last time this happens on this album. You know what else is quite jarring? What's that? Na, 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 na. Oh! <laughs> Because that happens 68 times on this song. <laughs> and it is just as bad as that. Tim, what was it again? Na, 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 na. Oh. 
I'm going to go ahead and sample that and start playing it throughout the house when you least expect it. Do it two more times. I will, but not when you want me to. Okay. The singing is a little bit of a Jason Mraz meets Maroon 5 with a dash of AJR, and I am not into it. Yeah, it's not a great sound. Um, <laughs> it it also mean, has a little bit, and I believe I said this on the last episode, there's a little bit of way worse Noah and the Whale on here. Oh, yeah. But yeah, this is a lot of like vaguely Christian-related angst and fake insecurities possibly brought about by the Blurry Face Monster. When the leader of the bad guys sang something soft and soaked in pain, I heard an echo from his secret hideaway. He must have forgot to close the door as he cranked out those dismal chords and his four walls declared him insane. He's the bad boy, but he's also sensitive and deep. So, you know, he's got everything going for him. <laughs> I think that that's describing Blurry Face going uh, back to his house to write another hit song. Because the next verse is, I found my way right time, wrong place as I pled my case. You're the judge, oh no. Set me free. You're the judge? Oh no. Set me free. I know my soul's freezing. Hell's hot for good reason, so please take me. Well, I think he's... he followed Blurry back and and he's like, this ends now, Blurry. I'm tired of you haunting my life. And he's like, don't you understand? I'm the one that's in control. And he's like, whoa, you're the judge? Oh no. Just kill me then. I'm tired of living this clean lifestyle. Hmm. I want to live for sin. Interesting. The vocals <laughs> are not really set me free. It set me free e e e e e e e Yeah. And I hate yeah, it. Yeah, it's a lot of E. This song is definitely made to be played live, especially with the na 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 na. Oh! Oh. One more. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, <laughs> so he says, three lights are lit, but the fourth one's out. I can tell because it's a been a bit darker than last night's bout. I forgot about the drought of light bulbs in this house, so I head out down a route I think is heading south. Long story short, I think the light bulbs are a reference to his sanity and negative thoughts, and it's darker than it's been the nights prior, and so he heads out, uh, and he knows things are heading south quick because he's beginning to stalk. Well, you know, I don't want to speak to it, Tim. I don't know what he's doing, but it's filthying up that cold soul. Yeah, absolutely. And once your soul gets filthy, you may as well just lean into it. Interesting advice. Track number eight, Doubt. Scared of my own image. Scared of my own immaturity. Scared of my own ceiling. This song starts off like it was meant to be played during an establishing shot of Tron Legacy, the good Tron. Yeah, it's, uh, well, yeah, that's the opening synth. Mm -hmm. And then it switches to like a trap beat with snare. Oh, pretty immediately. But it's, it's <laughs> yeah. a jarring transition. Absolutely. Yeah. I said synth bordering an 80s horror movie. So I agree with you, Tron Legacy. But then immediately back to a trap beat and we get scared of my own image. Scared of my own immaturity. Scared of my own ceiling. Scared will die of uncertainty. Fear might be the death of me. Fear leads to anxiety. Don't know what's inside of me. Great, man. This is fun. I'm having a great time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's a scaredy cat and can't be a top without blurry face. He's also scared of relenting to blurry face or possibly just doing the right thing. Yeah, great. Right. This one has the best chorus ever. Now, Tim, uh, you're not going to agree with me at all. I can tell you're a big grumple puss on this episode, but that's okay. We're going to do it anyway. So this chorus goes, don't. Don't forget about, 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 about me. Unfortunately, it then continues, even when I doubt you, doubt you, I'm no good without you. No, no. It should go, bow, 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 about me, even when I doubt, 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 doubt you. Do you not agree? Absolutely. I'm no good with ow, 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 you. Way better. Yeah. Love it. 100%. But he Thank chose you. not to do that. Right. Bad song. Bow, 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 about me. Yeah. It's bad, guys. It's bad. Non on the bishops. Clara way up the system. Repeating simple phrases. Someone wholly insisted. Want the markings made on my skin to mean something to me again. Hope you haven't left without me. Hope you haven't left without me, please. Is this about God now? I think it's all technically about God. Maybe he thinks, <laughs> good, well, again, he's a good Christian boy. Maybe he thinks that Blurry Face has been sent here by God or the devil. Well, actually, I think he might be contrasting your more traditional religion to the cult of Blurry because he says gnawing on the bishops, uh, which I'm not sure exactly what that means, but oh, call you your don't way want up there. Mm, you know what it means. <laughs> yeah, I do. Shall we head in back for a bit of a game of gnawing the bishop? No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> a, a good old gnaw session, friend. Get in there and gnaw it up. Now, no, I think he's comparing the formality and lack of redemption or possibly uh, follow through from your more traditional religions, like saying he wants the markings made on his skin to mean something to him again, but he doesn't think it's going to. Or possibly, Tim, he might be pledging his allegiance to Blurryface and he's got some sort of ancient markings on his 
skin uh, for that religion. That'd be fun. We should do that. I don't know what I don't know what you're saying. Mark up that skin, Garrett. Oh God. Track number nine, polarize. <laughs> This is maybe my least favorite song on the album. I concur. Uh, he's, I think he's using polarize to mean <laughs> separate himself yeah. from his from weird blurry face monster. Yeah, or, pretty much. Yeah. Help me polarize, help me polarize, help me down. Those stairs is where I'm hiding all my problems. Help me polarize, help me polarize, keep, help me out. My friends and I, we got lots of problems. Really, the I only got like two things I want to say about this song because it's pretty stupid. One, the idea, well, we'll get there in just a second. One, I, I like the idea that he is is getting his possibly new girlfriend to tricking her even to help him destroy blurry face polarizing the two which I'm not sure is how you'd say that ever it's not it is the wrong right word he could not think okay. of the right word and he did not have access to the internet and the song was due at least he didn't say metaphor <laughs> help me metaphor him so yeah he wants to get separated he's conned somebody into helping him destroy blurry face or at least attempting to but then the other thing that makes me laugh about this is where is it where is it oh this is the one with uh we have problems. That's what I wanted to say. Who, if you were saw showed Elvis Presley, bring him back from the dead. Whoa, whoa, what's rock and roll, man? The chorus is, we've got problems. <laughs> My friends and I, we got problems. Cool. What has happened to rock music? <laughs> Yikes. That's the refrain, gang. Track number 10, we're almost there. Not really. We don't believe what's on TV. Stick around, I'll sing you pretty sounds and we'll make money selling We've got another ukulele song here. The this uke is out. Sounds to me like an Avid Brothers or a Mumford and Sons doing like a cover of Little Ghost and yes. maybe miffing it a little bit. Yeah, you know, not a good cover. Yeah, right. It's it's just a random folk song in the middle of this. And again, they're very talented. Like they are putting this yes. together well. It just doesn't work for me. Yeah. It's also just what in the world does it have to do with the rest of this stuff? I couldn't tell you. Yeah. The first verse, we don't believe what's on TV because it's what we want to see. And what we want, we know we can't believe. We have all learned to kill our dreams. Do they have some sort of inverse confirmation bias? I don't understand exactly. Yeah, I don't I, I don't understand because they have, they've managed to achieve all their dreams and yes. many, many more. But yes, I mean, it seems rude to rub in the fact that most of us don't get to live out our dreams. I don't, that's not a fun song for me. Yeah. Hey, remember how you, uh, nothing that you wanted in life has come uh, to pass? Yep. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, we this got is problems. pretty much what I was envisioning. Oh, interesting. And in fact, we made a similar deal to this song when we started this podcast and began living together on these couch beds. The pre-chorus goes, I need to know that when I fail, you'll still be here. Because if you stick around, I'll sing you pretty sounds and we'll make money selling your hair. And we did. Right. Well, we didn't make money. We sold it. We gave, yeah. We got rid of my hair. <laughs> But this, uh, yeah, so I don't... This, this might be, maybe he's thrown in a little song here. This isn't a song about a lady. This is a song about trying to keep his drummer from quitting and also making plans to sell his drummer's hair if need be. Watch out, Josh. God, if I'm Josh, I'm like, that's plan B? <laughs> if this music doesn't work out, you're just going to sell my hair? <laughs> well, write some songs, man, because I just play drums. Yeah. Well, then comes Tim. I promised it. Here it is. The Neutral Milk Hotel horn. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> just sad in the background. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm listening to it. I'm just like, what's this doing here? I, I love it, but just why? He does seem to be actively planning on gaslighting his friends in the future. He says, what if my dream does not happen? Would I just change what I've told my friends? Just, listen, I never wanted to be a musician. I was always planning yeah, what are you talking about? on hanging out and, you know, with a buddy and, you know, we live in squalor, but we have an army have of interns. I have 600 emails from you, Taijo, saying, check out this sweet new track. <laughs> it was a joke, man. Yeah. It was a total goof. You opened those? You fucking idiot. Yep. Uh, you devoted three years to this. <laughs> You have four albums. One of them went diamond. Well, we don't know that it's yet. It's not. Well, no. One of the songs did. That's anyway, true. track number 11, Message Man. Every time I saw this written down, I read it as Massage Man. Oh. Every single time. <laughs> 
I once got Tim a very deep massage at a car wash. What was his name? Uh, Jimmy. Massages by Jimmy. We saw massages <laughs> by Jimmy at a car wash. <laughs> And Garrett was getting his car washed. I was along I for the ride. $20. We were standing Ugh. in there, and Garrett, the, you, Jimmy's <laughs> eyes lit up when he when he saw somebody approach. And mm. Garrett sicked this man on me. Yeah, guys, just to really paint the scene, a man with not a massage chair, a chair, and picture the guy that changed your oil last. That's who we're talking about. And I was just but like, clean. you got massages for this guy? And he's like, Yeah, I'm Jimmy. I'm Jimmy. I rub. I rub. Jimmy rub. <laughs> Jimmy rubbed him. Yes. Jimmy <laughs> rubbed him. <laughs> Jimmy, yes. Jimmy rubbed him hard. Right. Uh, um, but this lifelong friend. <laughs> this starts off like a door song designed as entry music or, or like walk on music for a boxer, kind of. Oh, I said uh, weird echoed Soviet chanting. Interesting. Those don't sound hey, anything hey, like. Hey, hey. Yeah. Well, okay. But then when the organ kicks in, I mean. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're talking about completely different parts of the song. Folks, have you caught on yet? It's wildly different from moment to moment. Uh, yeah, it begins with the thing I described, then that goes away. Well, you got the weird, what I assume are shirtless Eastern European men all just going, hey, hey, hey. Hey, no, 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 no. Uh, yeah, I was hey, also hey, picturing them shirtless. Absolutely. Then we get to the weird Dorsian organ of it all. And, and that's then, what Tim's talking about. And then slow reggae thing. It's oh, sure. shocking. The song goes, a loser hides behind a mask of my disguise. And who am I today is worse than other times. You don't know what I've done. I'm wanted and on the run. I'm wanted and on the run. So I'm taking this moment to live in the future. Uh, realizes that he can't polarize from blurry Tim when he is separate. From his conscience, he does the bad thing and does it hard. Jimmy rubbed him. <laughs> Tyro Joe, Tyro Joe rubbed him. <laughs> Finds himself at H two on the H two O at the corner of Labar and Barton Springs, handing out massages to teens. That's not what you want. I probably uh, was a teen still. Hmm. Yeah, you were probably eighteen or nineteen at Gross. the time. Gross. Yeah, Jimmy rub. Tim. Release me from the present. I'm obsessed in all these questions. Why I'm in denial that they tried this suicidal session. Please use discretion when you're messing with the message, man. These lyrics aren't for everyone. Only few understand. Tim, you must be emotionally open and intelligent to get this music. If you don't, you're stupid. I think you just need to know robot. that Blurry Face is the good guy. It's yeah. that's, the, uh, that's the Rosetta Stone to understanding this album. Yeah, it's the crux. Several more things are sung in this song. I don't particularly care, so I'm ready to move on if you are. Absolutely. Track 12, Hometown. Really dancey Portugal, the man meets what I think is possibly an actual Coldplay song. Quite possibly. It seems to be about being haunted in a very literal sense. Right? Yes. He says, my shadow tilts its head at me. Spirits in the dark are waiting. I will let the wind go quietly. I will let the wind go quietly. I. His, <laughs> Maybe that's him <laughs> relenting his darkness and giving in to Blurry to be a good boy. Oh, or possibly the opposite. Maybe this is one of those times when Blurry face briefly leaves. He has to go home and check on his daughter as his, his wife's out of town. So he's just got to go check in occasionally at night to make sure she's asleep and she's doing okay. And as soon oh as he leaves, his shadow just tilts its head and is like, huh? He's gone. Let's do it. Let's do the bad thing. Fuck me. <laughs> Wait, he fucked definitely didn't say fuck me. Maybe that. <laughs> be the one, be the one to take my soul and make it undone. Be the one, be the one to take me home and show me the sun. I know, I know, you can bring the fire. I can bring the bones. I know, I know, you'll make the fire. My bones will make it grow. <laughs> This is about sex. Is it? Yes, you're going to make the fire. That's the vagina. And my bones are going to make that fire grow. I'm going to be ram jamming till you, you know, climax. Gross, On man. fire. Gross. His words. Literally his words. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said ram jamming. I don't think I, I read through these What do you want me to call pretty it? Pretty carefully. Progressive I intercourse. What do you want me to call it? Penetrative sex? Gross, Tim. You're so clinical. Ram jam. <laughs> <laughs> that's the name of the band that sings Black Betty, by the way. Oh. Ram jam. Gross. Get it together. Anyway. 
their Black Betty band. And the uh, they're all dead. They're oh. all dead. It's like 70 year old song now. Where we're from, there's no sun. Our hometown's in the dark. Where we're from, there's no one. Our hometown's in the dark. Our hometown's in the dark. I think, well, first of all, why plural? We? Is he Venom now? Um, is he, is well, he, maybe, is that him in his shadow or is that him in Blurry? Either him in Blurry Face or him in Josh. <laughs> I hope it's not him and Josh because I think he's in an intimate moment here. Oh. There's no sun. Our hometown's in the dark. Where we're from, there, we're no one. Our hometown's in the dark. Yeah, he's, he was raised in the shadows. Put away, put away all the gods your fathers served today. Put away, put away your traditions. Believe me when I say we don't know. We don't know how to put back the power in our soul. We don't know. We don't know where to find what once was in our bones. Sounds like a cult now. Maybe the cult of blurry face. Yeah, perhaps he has seen this John Hamm, but without a face looking character enough that he's just like, well, if that's here constantly, Jesus can't be true. So I guess we're doing this thing now. Yeah, you had 2000 years to come back, Lord. John Hamm's here today. Granted, he doesn't have a face. Terrifying. Or in my case, eight foot stack of dirty sheets, (laughs) constantly morphing. Uh, Anyway, folks, we're almost there. Track number 13. Not today. I think this forms kind of a little coupling with the next song. This is, he seems depressed. He wants to hide in his room. He says, I don't yes. know why I just feel I'm better off staying in the room I was born in. Again, sort of weird infantilization. I look outside and see a whole world better off without me in it trying to transform it. So definitely, definitely depressed, but he's still willing to fight, right? He says, heard you say not today, tore the curtains down, windows open, now make a sound. Heard your voice, there's no choice. Tore the curtains oh, I down. think that's our buddy B face. Like she was like, I'm staying inside. I'm going to get in bed, close the curtains. And then Blurry's like, bitch, get up. We know what happens when you sit around all day. Absolutely. Your old buddy, the shadow tilts his head. The shadow's tilted his head a lot in my life, Garrett. Oh my God. Folks, isolate it, cut it, <laughs> double it, reverse it. He beckons uh, me. And send it back. HatePodmail at gmail.com. Oh, don't you test me? No, just because I played the piano doesn't mean I, I'm not willing to take you down. I'm sorry. I think he snapped at Mr. Face and then regrets it immediately. Well, I, I'm sorry, Blurry. Listen, I'm sorry. for as, as moral, as upstanding, as correct as Blurry Face is, he's still terrifying. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And could just bite your head off. Well, maybe. Because we don't know. Again, if it's my thing, we don't know if that's some sort of black hole face that he could just suck your head into. Or, I mean, maybe that whole thing is just a gaping maw. Who knows? Who knows what's in there? You can't see it. Can't look directly a- at it. Yeah. Is it empty? Is it full of soul? Nobody knows. Anyway, uh, the outro of this song is pretty much a bunch of buzz. And what do I mean by that? Ba 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 ba. And then this is a very nuanced thing, but I'm going to see if you recognize this at all. Uh, ba 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 ba. Does that sound familiar at all to you? <laughs> we didn't start the fire. Yeah, it is. Yes, it is that. It's a little slower, maybe, but. Uh, over and over in this song. Drove me nuts. But I really want to be done, so let's go to track number 14. A real bummer, folks. Goner. I've got two faces. Blurry's the one. Blurry face failed. Yeah, boy. This thing really ends on a sour note. Yeah. I'm a goner. Somebody catch my breath. I'm a goner. Somebody catch my breath. I want to be known by you. I want to be known by you. Though I'm weak and beaten down, I'll slip away into the sound. The ghost of you is close to me. I'm inside out. You're underneath. He just (sighs) sort of dies. (laughs) Yeah, he just kind of curls up and uh, collapses in on himself. It's pretty depressing. Maybe this is what happens when blurry face finally gets tired of your shit and sucks you into that <laughs> fucking head hole. That maw. That gaping endless maw of darkness. It's Lovecraftian in its existential terror. I've got two faces. Blurry's the one I'm not. These are lines in this song. <laughs> I've got two faces. Blurry's the one I'm not. I need your help to take him out. I need your help to take him out. Run, Blurry. No, Blurry's he's got nothing to, the to worry about, man. That's well, the now he's just appealing Blurry. to the shadow. Yeah, but he can suck that shadow 
Shadow in, too. Ooh, Blurry Face 2, Blurry's Revenge. Uh, let's see. He says, don't let me be gone a whole bunch of times. It's really depressing. It makes it kind of feel like we lost the album. Then there's a chorus and an outro, but you know what that sounds like, and we're done. Tim, how'd this thing do? This did okay. It did hit number one on the US Billboard 200. It was their only album to do so, and was the 12th best-selling album from 2010 to 2019, as well as the best-selling rock album, quote-unquote rock album, from that time period, according to Billboard. It is Hmm. quintuple platinum in the US. It has sold over 6.5 million copies worldwide. It is the first album ever to have every song certified at least gold by the RIAA. It is the most streamed rock album in history with more than 5.8 billion plays. It was on the Billboard 200 chart for four straight years, but it only hit number 18 inside of the Dutch, where it is only certified gold with 20,000 albums sold. Do better, Dutch. Yeah, I had as many equivalent streams this week. That's true. You know what? You probably pulled a Dutch to a double Dutch this week. Uh, Yeah, maybe not a double Dutch. That's a lot of streams. Fair enough. Uh, What did people think of it? Well, there are 6,951 total ratings on Amazon, 4.7 out of 5 stars on average, 87% 5 star, 3% 1 star. K Dawes in 2016 said, A to the W to the E to the S to the O to the M to the E. Such a unique and fresh sound. I'm a bit late coming on board the 21 Pilots train, but it's terrific. 5 out of 5 stars. My goodness. Craig Hodges in 2015 said, Not <laughs> Is that a funny name to me? Hold on. Hi, Craig Hodges. Not Craig. I am his daughter. I use his account. I have struggled with <laughs> body- <laughs> Plot twist. <laughs> I have <I've> been hodged. <laughs> I have struggled with bipolar depression and cyclothymia oh. since my freshman year of high school. I am now a sophomore oh. in college. Nothing that I have been put through has helped me more than their music. Hmm. And then she goes on. But five out of five stars. This, Garrett, will solve your depression. Or create it? I don't know. Unclear. Oh. Yeah. Kristen Brickner, 2017. If you're a Pilots fan, this is for you. You will not be disappointed. Disclaimer for parents. This album does not contain any profanity, nor does it contain any degrading lyrics to anyone. They sing about societal issues, their own insecurities, and phobias. They do not promote suicide or self-loathing. They just bring the light issues your teens might be going through. Five out of five stars. God, you're right. There's no swears. Yep. Tex- got problems. <laughs> Texas Mom of Three, 2016. Ah. It's titled Happy daughter equals happy mom. Bought this for my daughter who is in love with this band. Let's just say I earned some major mom points for this one. Arrived on time and in perfect condition. I have to admit, I've become a fan of this band as well. Although I lose mom points every time I belt out a song when it comes on the radio in the car, according to my kids. Smiley face. Five out of five stars. I am picturing a fastidious child with a ledger. It's just (laughs) constantly updating poor Linda and her mom points. Oh, it's so sad that her entire <laughs> self-worth is based solely on mom points. Last one here. This is by Peter from 2016. I'm a 54 year old white guy. Oh, God damn it. by the way, I, I did not write these down, but there's probably 700 reviews that are, just tell their age. I'm a 54 year old white guy, so hip hop is not my thing. My son mentioned 21 Pilots, so I poked around on Amazon Prime Music. I like this album enough to buy a copy quote unquote for my son's birthday. Somehow it ended up on my phone. There's a good balance of musicianship and rap. The lyrics are clean, have meaning, and more or less understandable without staring at the lyrics. I hope they succeed despite appealing to old white guys. They did. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Don't have to worry. (laughs) What is wrong with people? Also, what is with the deal and the age? It's again, I think it's the one interesting thing. There's a lot of people out there that the one interesting thing about them, 54 years old, they're still alive. (laughs) Yeah. I'm an architect. I'm an astronaut i'm 41 <laughs> what i'm not That's dead not a, yeah <laughs> i didn't die yet uh still alive oh worst high school reunion ever kyle kyle's gone on to start his own business and has become a real community leader tim is still alive <laughs> let's give a big round of applause for tim <laughs> hey everybody remember me who'd have thought right still alive <laughs> absolutely you know what actually this is starting to starting to make some sense yeah tim who's this for 
old white guys, Garrett, looking to connect nope. with today's youths. This is for moms who desperately want their kids to think they're cool. This is for the severely depressed. Uh, this is for people haunted by faceless monsters. <laughs> moms that are desperately in need of more mom points. Oh, yeah. This is squandered thing. all of their mom points. Garrett once tried to institute friend points for me. Yeah, um, that did happen. It did. It did. Unfortunately, I found the stockpile of friend points and really quickly devalued that mm. currency. Yeah. Real in stagflation nightmare. It's political. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned, folks. It's coming soon. All righty. That brings us to final thoughts. Is there anything else that you need to share before we ask the titular question? God, no. Fantastic. Then I'll go ahead and do it. Timmy, we've been all the way through it. Do you hate this album? Be honest. Ah, oh, Garrett. I think you worked hard. I think you were persistent. I think you had stamina. I think you really worked it this week. Uh, you tried not mm. to, but <laughs> I just, gross. I don't quite hate it yet. I don't quite <laughs> hate it. I think that if you were to keep on pushing just a little bit longer, I, I might end up hating it. I might get there at the end, but I don't like it. It's not for me. I have no use for this. There's parts that I, I kind of no like, but I just, I, I mean, I just, it's meh. I just don't, I'm meh. I'm meh. Fair enough. What about you, friend? I assume you didn't get there, but maybe. Uh, hmm. It's no. okay. Oh. Uh. <laughs> No, no, no. I, I, I didn't. I, I don't hate it. It's uh, You too I have not gotten the release that you so desperately seek. I get it. Sure. That is to say, I, I don't hate it. It's They're very talented. It's not for me. I do think that at least five of the songs on here I could just do without. The album probably could as well. But you can't release a nine song album. I get it. You can. Maybe. It's perfectly well, reasonable. Sure, you can. There's no rules. Uh, it's like Outback Steakhouse. But I think that you could have split up some of the earlier songs into two different songs and they both would have been the better for it. So that's maybe how you make up some of them. I don't know. Doesn't really matter. I won't give this a second thought. I will actively avoid these songs probably forever. Um, Just I can't imagine that changing. a single song per song. That's all I ask. Well, that's not going to happen though. Mm. All righty, Timmy, we did it. That's going to wrap it up for this week as always. And I don't know why we wait to the end to ask it. If you can, if there's a way to rate, review, subscribe, let people know that you like the show, please go do it. Five stars is all we ask as a minimum. If you have extra time, go ahead and and write a review. We do read them and the funny ones get cold at the end of the year and read on a very special year in review. Or maybe it's the mailbag. I don't remember which. Both maybe? We'll see. Anywho, we want to hear from you. You can also reach out to us at hatepodmail at gmail.com and we love your emails and the funny ones get read on the prepisodes, one per week at least, and the not so funny ones get replied to earnestly. Hold on, Garrett, there's just too many. We can't read all the funny ones. We can't reply to all That's the true. non-funny ones. There's some funny ones that gets replies. There's some funny ones that get lost. Sometimes you send us a song and I don't notice because it gets dropped down past the first 50 and so I don't ever see That's it. That's true. And then you send me a, you send me an Instagram thing and then I go looking for it. That happens. That's actually a really good point. Like, um, I'm not going to give you an exact number, but we we literally have hundreds of emails. Uh, Unread emails. But they will... We will read them. Uh, Christmas is coming to... Uh, a lot of them are like one sentence. We'll get to them. I did 150... <laughs> <laughs> Let's not make promises we can no longer keep. There's, we get so many emails. You're very nice. We love all these emails. We like and getting doing it. the many, many emails you send. It is a lot, though. Don't listen to Tim. Double it. Mm. Uh, okay. Stop making that noise. <laughs> uh, you can also go to hatepod.com and click on contact us in the upper left-hand corner. It asks for an email. That's literally so we can reply. But we also recently asked for your dark secrets. So if you want to tell us your dark secrets via that, then you don't have to give us your actual email. And I understand why you might not want to after you tell us so many dark secrets. We also have Instagram. That's hatepod. Uh, Twitter's album hatepod. I'm G Harvey tweets on Twitter. And I want to hear from you. I'm having active conversations with many of you right now over Twitter in the DMs, as they say. And they're not necessarily about music. Some of it's about uh, movies. Some of it's about bad movies. Some of it's about uh, unicorns. Some of it's about who knows what. So reach out. We've got a subreddits. We've got a Discord server. The invite link is, I believe, pinned to our Twitter feed. So go there to get it. That's hate po album hate pod. Sorry. And I think that's going to pretty much do it for why I hate this album. I've been one of your hosts. Na na na. Nah, nah. Oh! 
That's four. <laughs> I have been Timothy P. Richardson, and between April 8th, 2008 and August 24th, 2009, Garrett Chevalier Harvey secretly robbed seven Taco Cabana locations in the greater Dallas Fort Worth area. That's not a quote. No, it's an accusation. A, a damning accusation. <laughs> yeah, he did. It's okay. Allegedly. No. <laughs> I'm going to sue you for so much. There's cowboys running through my dreams Nothing's quite the way it seems I joined the Navy, got kicked out in a week My facial features aren't distinct Try to find some meaning in these songs The genius is a genius, got it wrong No, it's a lobster murder sex thing It's the bleaching of the rear A full assault on both your ears Riffs are too repetitive The lyrics make no sense All the songs are besides The cover art's a mess Listen to it for a week Now that week has passed It's the why I hate this album Podcast With Tim and Gary